Hey, it's Hannes Knechtges of Werdemusiker. Thanks for tuning in here and welcome to your first guitar lesson ever. Maybe you already got a guitar for quite a time at home and you never knew how to start out. Or maybe you just got your guitar brand new and you just don't know how to start out. So this video is for you then. And even if you already tried out some things on your guitar, this video might also be for you because we are about to learn here not only how to play cool songs, I will also tell you how you should grab the guitar, how you should strum the guitar. I give a lot of cool tips and if you want to learn even more, check out the link in my video description here, there you find my free lessons, tons of cool stuff going on there too. It will be a good basis to understand everything you need to become a great guitar player. So let's start out with your first guitar lesson. I mean, you probably unboxed it now or got it from uh, out of your gig bag or whatever, and you have to tune your guitar to sound good. A lot of beginners fail and say, oh, I'm not talented enough or I suck or whatever because the guitar is detuned and they don't know about that. I mean, you probably have a tuner in your pocket because you can just download tuning apps which show you the correct pitch of a string and you could also buy like a clip tuner like this, just, I don't know, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever. You put it on your headstock of your guitar, you turn it on and it shows you if your guitar is in pitch are in tune or not. And I mean, to explain all the details you have to consider while tuning a guitar would like let this video explode because it, it depends on how much you know about uh, string names and stuff. So I will skip that and leave that to my crash course which I told you about before my free lesson. So check this out if you really want to dig into tuning. But I want to know, uh, let you know how the names of the strings are. And the first string, which one is the closest to you, is actually called the sixth string. So don't get confused by that, but this is an important thing to know. If you look up um, things on the internet, you get confused by um, the labeling of the string. So the lowest string, which is sounding the lowest, is called the sixth string and it's called E. Then you have the A string, the D string, the G string, the B string and the E string. So how can you remember all this? I started out with kind of a stupid memory sentence um, where the string names were the first letters of a word. So it was like eat all day, get big early. I don't know, it's like E-A-D-G-B-E. -E. You can come up with whatever you like. It's just important that you remember the names of the strings that, you, that we have like the 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd and 1st string in that order. Because also a lot of tuners show the string names or even the number of the string. This one shows like for example the A, if I hit the 5th string, this is the A string. I saw light, green light, we need the green light, yeah. Thank you. This is the E string, you see the letter there. Green light, please. Green light. Yeah. D string. G string. B string. And what was it called again? Correct. E. So, when your guitar is in tune, let's check out what we can do with this. <laughs> we can play stuff within the frets we can play notes, single notes, we can play chords and we can uh, do a lot of other cool stuff but where do I grab those notes? This is the most important question because I mean you can have shapes looked up on the internet and still they sound like and you need to know how to actually play those notes. So for example if you want to play a note in the third fret of the low E string which is this string here Take your middle finger, for example. One, two, three. This is the third, third fret. Or it's kind of like a field which is separated by those f metal or steel things here, which are called the frets. So first field, second field, 
third field, which we call frets. So push down the string in that third fret as close as you can to this metal fret here. Don't push the string down here, close to the second metal thing, but close to the third. See the difference? It's way easier to create a note, create a tone in that position than it is here. If I use the same pressure on my fingertip, you hear that buzz. I need to push way harder to create the note. So it's easier here. It makes it so much easier to create chords in a cool way, especially for beginners who don't know that. I mean, if you play a note here or there, it might be a tiny difference for you because it's just like a centimeter or whatever, but it makes a huge tonal difference. And if you sum it, summarize that up for a whole chord where you use like two, three or four fingers at the same time and you build up more and more pressure within your hand that gets so annoying and so stressful. So be aware of that, that you grab as close as it's possible. I mean, it's not always like possible to be so close to the frets, but don't also don't uh, push down the strings on the frets. So this also creates a really kind of tone the difference. Don't push on the frets, it's right next to it. So, please play that note. Third fret of the low E string is called G. And this is where we also build our first chord. Okay. You are supposed to have the counter pressure to build up the pressure on the string with your thumb. Don't have your thumb like there, or there, or there, or whatever, I don't know, here. Crazy stuff going on there, saw that also once, but try to avoid that. Then you put your index finger in the second fret of the A string and the ring finger in the third fret of the high E string. Then you hit all six strings. Might sound like this. Try to really use your fingertips. And what could also happen is that the back of your fingers touch the very next string and block it. So, take a look at my middle finger here. And then I play the next string, it's dead. Because my finger is lying, I have to put it up straight. Ah. So I don't touch the A string with the back of my middle finger. And really check your chord, if it's going right. Take a look at my hand, how it looks take a look at your hand where the thumb is and take a look at your wrist here if it's in a, some position like this this is not good try to be as straight within your hand as possible also my hand touches the back of the neck like here kind of like going there like this my arm the arm is straight with the hand, one line going there and then I place the fingers, the thumb is giving me counter pressure here. Okay, let's have a strumming pattern on that very first chord. Just down strokes first, keep it easy. important to give yourself some breaks. Take away the pressure because it's very stressful for your hand at the beginning. Shake your hand to make it really feeling good and we don't want any pain in your hand or something like this because you're pushing it too hard for, I don't know, 10 minutes in a row or something. Then you experiment with your pick, which you place 
between your thumb and your index finger, just like this. And then try to play soft and play loud. A lot of stuff is within your guitar, a lot of details that you can get out also if you're a beginner. It's also about sharpening your ears, of course. Okay, let's go to the next chord. It's the, this was the G major chord, and now we're going to the A minor chord. Index finger in the first fret of the B string, which is the second string. Ring finger in the second fret of the G string, which is the third string from, counting from down here. The middle finger goes into the second fret of the fourth string, which is the D string. And now, that also might again sound like... You really use your finger tips, put up the fingers straight so they don't block each other, and then build up the counter pressure with the thumb. I'm again landing here with this part of my hand, the back of the neck. Be as close as it is possible. I mean, the middle finger can't be as close to the fret as the ring finger, of course. But just keep that in mind. Don't push the chord here. Push it down there. And then you change between those two chords. Because chord changes is like, wow, man. This is the tough stuff. Do this like, in the tempo you can. Your fingers need to know where they go. Do that for, press pause and do that for five minutes or something like this. Just change between those two chords. Take a look at my thumb, it's in this nearly the same position all the time. And then you do this. You play the G chord and then you play the A chord. Three, four, G, two, three. Four and A minor, two, three, four, and G, two, three, four, and A minor, two, three, four, and G, two, three, four, and A minor, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, and A minor, two, three, four. And G, two, three, four. And A minor, two, three, four. And then we change to C major, which is kind of similar to A minor. When you go from there, from A minor, you need to lift up your ring finger and put it into the third fret of the A string. The rest stays where it was. So index finger first fret B string, middle finger second fret D string, and ring finger is going to the third fret of the A string. And again, remember, get as close to the frets as possible, not on them, but as close as you can. It makes it way easier for you to produce a sound. go back to G again. So let's play all those three chords. If you still need time to change between those chords, which is absolutely normal, take your time. Press pause and make a dry exercise between those three chords. Please do me the favor and don't uh, blame yourself for not being ready already. This is um, kind of crazy stuff already, but I think you can do it by just doing this dry exercise and if you do that in the next days, always make sure you just take a close look at your hand. Does it look natural to you? I mean, there are a lot of things that you can think of, but remember those. Push down with your fingertips, have the finger straight, have the thumb as a counter pressing element, and give yourself rests. Because after a while, your hand will be like really stressed out and will kind of like feel pretty heavy to push down those strings. So, Give yourself rest, shake your hand and go again. Do this 
this and this. Be as close to the frets as possible. Have the fingers straight so they don't block strings by accident. Use your fingertips, okay? This might take a while for you, but I mean, we're in your first guitar lesson here. Always get that straight, okay? Don't blame yourself or say, oh, I'm not talented enough or something like this. So I will just show you something what you can do with this. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. I said, hey, what's going on? And I say, G, E, 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 A minor to the C and back to the G. Or if you use just A minor and G, A minor to the G to A minor, A minor to the G to A minor. I mean, pretty famous songs all uh, out there. A lot of more stuff is waiting there. You know, those chords are like must-know chords because you use them for billions of songs, really. And if we add some more chords there, of course, more doors open for more songs. So if we also use the next chord, our fourth chord here today, the D chord, we have a lot of more songs that we can play. So, put down the index finger in the second fret of the G string, the ring finger in the third fret of the B string, and the middle finger in the second fret of the high E string. So this is first string, E string here, middle finger, second fret, ring finger, third fret, B string is the second string, and index finger, second fret, G string, which is the third string. And we don't play the low E string and the A string there. Again, remember, be as close to the frets as possible, but don't push it on the frets. Fingers need to be straight standing. The ring finger tends to block the first string there. And again, remember, do those dry exercises between those songs before you kick it out and try to play a song. You can do that, of course, but try to keep it simple. I mean, play a, an easy strumming pattern there first when you change between the chords. Just strum down once and then go to the next chord. You really need to focus on your grabbing hand, I think, to master it. I mean, you can always speed it up later, but get the chords done correct, you know, in a, in a, in a good way that makes it easy for you to play those chords. So, G, be as close to the frets as possible. Have the fingers straight standing with the fingertips, please. And go to A minor. So we have G, A minor, C, and to D. I mean, those changes between C and D, all the fingers need to take a different position. This is quite hard. Get this done. C, D, C, D, C, D, and so on. Do that for five minutes again, those dry exercises, and make a rest. Give yourself a rest. Man. And then you play every chord, strum every chord once for one bar. Three, four, one, two, the A minor, one, two, three, to the C, two, three, to the D, two, three, four, to the G, two, three, four to a minor two three four to the c three four to the d and from the top two three four to a minor two three four to the c two three 
four to the D two three four to the G two three four to A minor two three four to the C two three four to the D two three four to the G two three four to A minor two three four to the C two three four to the D two three four we already played or I showed you how to play two songs with those chords another classic that you can play with those beautiful chords is knock knock knocking on heaven's door Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. It is G. Knock, knock, D on heaven's A minor. Let's ring A minor for two bars. G. Knock, knock, D on heaven's C. And again, C, let it ring, and to the G. Knock, knock, D on heaven's A minor. Let it ring for two bars. And for four beats, knock knocking on heaven C, and again for half a bar G one two D four two three four one two three four one two three four. So half a bar G, half a bar D, whole bar. A minor and again half a bar G half a bar D and a whole bar of C major and again knock knock knocking on heaven's door knock knock knocking on heaven's door if you have trouble with the chords Make sure your wrist close to the frets as possible. G and make dry exercises when you have trouble changing the chords. You get the idea of it, okay? It works for all the songs, those techniques, how to practice your chords and chord progressions. And um, those are so important for everything you do on the guitar. No matter what, no matter what level you are, you can always improve on, on the way how you grab the chords as close to the frets as possible because it's easier. You can save energy with this. You can save pres pressure in your hand with this. And now let's go to some more rhythmical. But no worries, we won't um, make any chord progression here in our first guitar lesson with this. Now we're going to focus just on the strumming hand. We're using the D chord here. And I probably assume you already recognize this. It's kind of like a Proud Mary, Proud Mary-ish rhythm going on there over the D chord, D major. Index finger in the th second fret of the G string, which is the third string, ring finger in the third fret of the B string, which is the second string, and the middle finger in the second fret of the high E string, which is the first string. Be as close as possible to the frets. And then you do a down and then you do an upstroke again, um, immediately after the downstroke. And then there's a special sound we want to create with our guitar. A dead note. We create that dead note with a downstroke, but at the same time you hit the strings with a pick. We damp the strings with our edge of the wrist here. The moment I hit the pick with the pick, the strings, 
I hit the strength with my wrist too. From down, down stroke. Try that first. And try to land with your pick after the down stroke beneath the E string because after that we have to do an up stroke again. Okay, so we have down, up, that note, up, down, up, that note, up, down, up, that note, up, down, up, that note, up. The cool thing is, when you do that dead note, I also can relax for that very moment my grabbing hand and save some energy in my hand because I don't have to push down that D chord all the time. And so it's like down, up, dead note, and in the same moment I relax my fingers, I just release the pressure and then I'm ready again already for the upstroke. So take a look at my grabbing hand here, as close as it's possible. You see how my fingers just go up and down again. And again, make rests, give your hand a chance to relax a little bit, shake the hand, shake your hand. And um, what I always like to do um, to warm up my hands is something like this. Open your hand and close it pretty fast for a couple of seconds. This really lets the blood rush into your hand and makes it really more flexible. And I think it's important to always remember what's the basis of a good chord. Do the dry exercises between those chords. No matter what song you play, this is always a good thing because you have to play chords in all combinations. So this will always be helpful for any song. And grab the chords as close to the frets as possible. Try to have a healthy angle going on here in your wrist. And have the finger straight from the top on the strings with your fingertips. Those are the things you should consider always when you play a note, play a chord, play a song. Always keep that in mind. This is the thing I want to give, give you. And the most important thing is to have fun and make music with your guitar. And please don't think that you're, I said that in the beginning, that you're not talented enough or something like this, or that you're not good enough, or that your guitar sucks or whatever. Get your guitar tuned and try to follow these instructions concerning how to build up a nice chord, how to build up a song to get it together. And if you have trouble with those kind of stuff, I really recommend you to check out my free lessons in the video description. They go into detail in some stuff, as I said before, in the tuning and also in the how to grab the chords and stuff. It goes way more into detail. A lot of fun lessons there. For me, it's always important to make music and to play songs because I think this is what motivates you the most. So please drop me a comment or whatever you like and let me know what you think of this video. Thanks for watching and see you in our next lesson, our next video here. I'm Hannes Knechtkes. See you, bye.